Now we have a deity of a volunteer to report to be given from Mr. Murai, the deputy and department director from the vibrant city development, a city of Toyama. Uh, and the title is Compact City. Please speak into Japanese channel and turn on your microphone. Yes, I understood. Thank you. Well, my name is Murai. I am the Deputy Department Director for the Bible and City Development City of Toyama. Thank you very much for your precious opportunity. I would like to give you an explanation about the community building in the City of Toyama. First, I would like to give you the overview about the City of Toyama. Population of the city is about 0.41 million, which is about 40% of the total prefectural population. The size is about 1,200 square kilometers, about 30% of the whole prefecture. Size-wise, it is the largest out of the, all the core cities available in Japan. Not only that, the city has such a steep geography from Toyama Bay, zero meter above the sea level, to Hida Mountain Ridge, located at 3,000 meters above the sea level, above the sea level, and rich in nature, surrounded by water and green. Well, as you can see in the photo, there is a downtown and suburbs in the outer area. In the outer area, there is a rural area as well. The city area is flat, therefore it is easy to construct roads and its geography is convenient for expansion. Now, let me explain what led us to work on compact community building. First is population decline and super-aging population. Just as any other regional cities throughout Japan, Toyama City's population hit peak in 2010, as you can see on the graph. It is expected that it will decline by 14% by 2045. Furthermore, in 2035, over 30% of the population will be senior citizens. Increase of social security costs along with the decline of economic activities and tax revenue are worried. Next is on background and challenges caused by the city's characteristics. Number of cars on par household in our prefecture is ranked second in Japan following a prefecture of the Fukui. In the reality, it is normal for families to own two or three vehicles or to buy a car once license is acquired. Automotive ownership ratio is high. Because of that, as the left bottom graph shows, many citizens use automobile for outings, and its usage ratio has been increasing recently. Against that background, public transport, as you see on the right, has been decreasing, especially fixed road bus shown in green has decreased by 70% compared to its peak. So uh, we were overly dependent on the automobiles, which led to the decline of public transport, which also led to the, uh, the lowering of the service level as well. The public transport was on decline, and as you see in the graph on right, survey showed that around 30% of citizens were not in position to freely use the cars, and many of such people were senior females, and they had difficulty going out without help being provided from their family members. Our city was a place difficult to live in for citizens without easy access to car. And as the graph on relationship between area of downtown area and population density shows, society overly dependent on cars that expanded the downtown, which made our city the least dense prefectural capital in Japan. Expansion of the downtown raised costs for maintaining infrastructure, such as road and city, management costs such as a garbage collection and as urban functions such as a commercial facilities are built in the outer suburbs fall of city center was a concern as well so all the challenges that i've talked about are shown in one two four other than those problems the city faced a variety of issues including increase of co2 emission due to lifestyle dependent on automobiles and maintain maintenance of redundant the public facilities due to merger of cities, towns, and villages. And the core issue of life dependent on vehicles and expansion of the town is expected to be more serious as population decline and as aging continues. Uh, and as we recognize that the town, just like any other regional cities in Japan with a low density of residential areas, which is specialized for car-based lifestyle, where people cannot move around freely without cars, will not be able to survive uh, the next uh, the, for 30 years. 
we came to realize that the abode we form that changes the city itself is necessary. Therefore, our aim is to vitalize public transport while suppressing expansion of the downtown and minimizing the population decrease. Toyama City's public transport was on decline due to automobile-centric lifestyle. Style, but we still had a good amount of public transport network for the regional city. We had seven railways, 70 routes for bus. From the Toyama Station, network radiated, meaning we could access anywhere from anywhere by going through the Toyama Station. Therefore, we decided to leverage the good public transport network, execute building a, comp building a compact community where the facilities are concentrated based on public transportation. As the diagram on the left shows, it is not a uh, over-concentrated compact city, but rather a cluster style compact city. It is where urban functions such as commerce and business and buildings will be concentrated in walkable areas formed at each station and bus stop linked by public transportation. A numerical target for the compact city was set. Ratio of population that live in a walkable area from public transport is a uh, 28% uh, in 2005, and target was to increase that to 42% by 2025. At this moment, we are at 40%. These initiatives are promoted through three measures. One, vitalization of public transport. Well, from the standpoint of community building, for things that are necessary, public administration would bear the cost in order to simulate the public transport and to work on the community building along with the public transport. Second point is in encouraging people to live near public transportation at the stations and up the railway and the bus within the walkable area from these stations that we promote people to live in. And third uh, is the vitalization of the downtown. Well, uh, this is about uh, for, well, uh, the base on the Toyama station uh, to concentrate on the urban, air, uh, urban functions in those areas. Uh, let me explain details on the first pillar, the vitalization of the public transport. As a lead in Project 4 at the pillar, we have developed the Toyama Light Rail Transit, LRT. Based on an idea of public installation and private op operation, we will place a Japan Railway and Toyama One Line, which had forced decline which has faced a decline in passenger with Japan's first full-fledged light rail transit system. Along with the installation of the LRT, frequency of the train arriving was increased to one in every 15 minutes from one in 30 to 60 minutes. We pushed back the departure time of the last train of the day, established a new station, introduced low floor cars and fixed fare. We have been working on improving its service. As a result of the light rail, uh, the transit being developed. Number of packs has increased by 2.1 times in weekdays, four times in holidays, compared to two times before the launch. Of course, users increase during uh, com commuting hours, uh, but we clearly see the increase of seniors during the daytime. We believe that this is due to seniors who did not have much opportunities to go out felt motivated to go out as new stops were set up near the supermarkets and frequency of the train arrival increased. This indeed was a significant achievement. Next thing we worked on was to, uh, was to form a loop of rail for inner city streetcars. A part of the railway located in the area south of the Toyama station was extended partly to form a loop for streetcars. Originally, the Toyama Station and the city center were 1.5 kilometers apart to each other. Therefore, we had wanted uh, we wanted uh, to enhance uh, the ease of moving around. Therefore, we installed 900 meters of new well uh, to close the loop, making contribution to enhancement of the access to the Toyama Station and downtown and vitalization of the downtown. And and the milestone for LRT network was achieved, which was connection of two LRT railways being operated at north and south of the Tama Station. It was a project to connect the two LRTs at the bottom of the Tama Station raised above the ground. This seamlessly connected southern and northern areas, which made it convenient for citizens to move around. Well, uh, the, well, for the last hundred years, well, uh, the railways were separated, but finally we had been able uh, to connect the north and south. This was uh, the major achievements being made for the building of the compact city in Toyama.
These pictures were taken after a connection of the northern and southern streetcar railways were being completed. In the left, you can see gate for Shinkansen bullet train. To the right, you can see a stop for streetcar. There are, they are only 38 meters apart. For the first time in Japan, we established a streetcar stop in front of the entrance exit gate for bullet train. And because the stop is located underneath the raised platform, it became less vulnerable to rain and snow, and there is no risk of cars anymore. It led to tremendous improvement of comfort as well. And here is an overview of the Toyama station, including connected LRT. The Toyama station is now a nexus of not only Shinkansen bullet train and street cars, but of conventional railways, the fixed route bus, taxi, shared cycle, and other transport functions. All of them are connected on the ground without any steps. It has become a transportation terminal convenient for everyone, including seniors, visitors with huge luggage, people with baby stroller. Other than LRT network in the downtown, we are also operating community bus to improve access to main public transportations. But at an area around Kudeha Station, located to west of the Tema Station, locally managed bus operation by citizens under the support from local residents, companies, and public administration is there. Residents themselves decide operation route and stops leading the people to have more a sense of the ownership. So at the so-called silver taxis operated at the flat area, well, this is where the citizens themselves would operate the bus. And and we are providing a certain support to operation of these bus. Well, to the left, you can see some examples. At, well, here is an example of the bus to uh, the Kuleha station. Well, uh, we will uh, get the, uh, the money uh, from the local residents and the sponsorship from the local companies and also from the public administration by doing so. And it's operator of the bus. Uh, we would be able to and uh, ask uh, the operators to operate uh, the bus. The stations are decided by uh, the local community, and therefore it leads to uh, the uh, sense of the ownership. And next, I'd like to explain the second pillar, which is the promotion of living along the public transportation lines. In Toyama City, provides subsidies to private businesses that build condominiums and residential land in the city center and along public transportation lines, as well as to citizens who build or purchase new houses in order to improve the convenience of public transformation and to encourage people to choose areas along public transformation lines as their places of residence. So, and as you can see on the right hand side, several stations that previously had ticket gates on only one side of the station are now being upgraded with with ticket gates on the opposite, opposite side and residential areas and commercial facilities such as supermarkets are being developed. By promoting residential inducements and improvements centered on such public transportation, we are still working to achieve our goal of having the population living areas with convenient public transportation. Next, our third pillar is the revitalization of the city center. Uh, the concrete initiative we first took was the development of Grand Plaza. Toyama is an area prone to rain and snow. So the plaza was developed as an all-weather multi-purpose plaza that can be used even in such weather and that can also serve as a bustling center of activity. The utilization rate of Grand Plaza on holidays is 100% and it is widely recognized by citizens as a place where they can find something going on even on their days off. And we also believe that the visit to Grand Plaza has led to a ripple effect on the shopping uh, district in this central city area. The Grand Plaza, shown in the photo, is used as a playground for children, and also flea markets and other events are held. And as you can, as you can see on the lower left, it is covered with uh, plastic panels and transformed into a skating rink, a so-called echo rink uh, during the winter season. So in this way, prime location in the city center functions as a place where many people meet by being used in a variety of ways and becoming a place where people can sit, uh, spend time on a daily basis. This is Toyama Kiradi, uh, 
a complex uh, facility of Glass Art Museum and Municipal Library. The, uh, it was designed by Kengo Kuma, who also designed a national stadium, and the facility is used not only by citizens, but by tourists and many other people as well. And this is an initiative to utilize publicly owned land in the city center. More than anywhere else, the central city has been affected by the declining population, falling birth rate, and the aging population, and expansion of the urban area. Uh, as a result, originally seven elementary schools were consolidated into two, creating five largely publicly owned schools. Toyama City used this publicly owned land to promote public-private partnerships to fulfill functions that were lacking in the city, such as facilities for preventing nursing, uh, facilities for nursing care, health, and medical care, and welfare. Not only the development of these facilities. Uh, but uh, we're also working to make the walking space connecting these facilities a place where people would want to walk. Hanging biscuits, hanging baskets decorated with seasonal flowers and banner flags are appreciated by citizens and many other visitors. So let me explain to you about the effects of the or the benefits of compact city planning that I just explained. First, the number of users of the city tram. In 2006, Toyama Light Rail opened and uh, the conversion of city tram into loop line in 2009 and elevated train following the opening of the Hokuri Kushin Kansen in 2015. And uh, as you see, after all of these, the number of users have been continued to increase. Uh, the addition of north-south streetcar connection with this, the users can now travel north and south of Toyama Station with no transfers and with fixed fares increasing the number of users crossing from north to south. As, uh, the top graph shows the increase in number of users going from north to south, and the bottom shows the uh, Toyamako line. So from automotive-centered lifestyle to public transformation-centered lifestyle, we are gradually seeing a change. And uh, this is related to the promotion of living along the public transportation lines. In Toyama City overall, there has been an actual decrease in population uh, since 2010. But so this evaluation is based on the offset of immigration and outmigration. migration In the urban areas, uh, we have maintained excess immigration since 2008, and the area of long public transportation have maintained excess of outmigration since 2012. Many people have, cho have chosen these areas with convenient public transportation as their place of residence. This is the visualization from 2006 through 2008 uh, when the city on complex city planning on the left hand side started. There was still high diffusion tendency and People started to move in the suburbs, but from 2017 through 2019, the immigration volume started to form in the central areas and along public transportation lines, meaning that uh, this is clustered amongst the public transportation. And this is concerning land value overall. Ever since 1993, since the bubble economy burst, land prices have declined for 31 consecutive years. But in Toyama City, uh, for eight consecutive years, uh, public uh, land prices continue to rise. With the exception of COVID, especially public investment in the city's tram loop line project, the opening of Hokuriku Shinkansen and North South Streetcar Connection, this has pri stimulated private investment, resulting in rising line prices along Toyama Station and the central area. Now, our international reputation has shown in 2012 OECD Compact Cities Policy Report. Uh, Together with Melbourne, Paris, Portland, Vancouver, Toyama was selected as one of the top five. And in 2014, C4 All Energy, uh, City to Energy, Improve Energy Efficiency. Uh, we were the only city in Japan to be selected. And 2016, Toyama City hosted a G7 Environmental Ministerial meeting. So we've been recognized as compact, uh, easy to live city which is very encouraging. So how, how we want to be going forward? In Toyama City, through Compact City, we want to shift to a positive spiral. For example, with LRT network and other urban mobility improvements, 
Uh, would you like to improve the convenience of public transportation, increase the number of users, creating lifestyle changes for the elderly and the young? And uh, we believe that bringing more people out in the city will lead to the revitalization of the central area and local community, which will lead to settling down along public transportation lines and changing city people's awareness. Ultimately, we hope that by continuing this kind of community development, we can realize a highly sustainable city that will increase its value as a city of choice and easily as its population declines, the decline will be more mild. Uh, thank you very much. That is all. Thank you. Mr. Murai, thank you very much for your presentation.